Hi, so for today's video, I just wanted to do something kind of fun and lighthearted. And I thought about this idea a long time ago. I always think about it often with my natural anxiety while I'm laying in bed at night. All of the things that I would tell my younger self now that I'm an older, mature and wise adult at the age of 36. So I played around with the idea and at first I thought I was gonna do 15 things I would tell my 15 year old self because I could easily, easily come up with that many things. But I'm gonna narrow it down to five for the sake of not dragging this video out super long. So I definitely have a lot of regrets in my life, like little ones, little things like those things that you think about when you're showering and you just cringe and you're like, oh, that's so embarrassing or why did I do that? Or what I would do now that I know so much more but I also like where my life is now. So there's that whole thing of like, I don't wanna like change too much about what happened to me in my life or my experiences or my decisions because I ended up okay. I ended up okay. But here are five things I think that would have really helped me just get through my young adulthood a little easier, especially like the high school years and the early 20s, things that I would have done just slightly different in order to just have a little more fun and just, yeah, just make things a little easier. So number one that just came to the top of my head, <laughs> especially in my later years now, I think about it all the time, is I wish I would have taken biology in high school. I was really intimidated at the time with any science courses and math courses. I was always much stronger in like reading and writing and English and history and philosophy and things like that. So I just was always like, the sciences aren't cut out for me, especially as I got into high school and there was chemistry, biology, physics, they just all sounded way too intimidating. And I ended up taking like geology and learning about earthquakes and dinosaurs. But man, knowing biology and just knowing our own biology, human biology is so important. And it just blew my mind as I became a adult woman and into my thirties even, how little I knew even about my own reproductive system and just how the most basic things in my body work and it really changed for me when I started learning more about that and just learned to, like I literally started watching YouTube videos reading books and articles how I treated my body once I understood more about how food impacts my body how stress impacts my body just how my body works in general and even just like I get my period every week and for the longest time I knew very little about how that worked and, and just like just didn't think about it. And now that I've learned so much more about just these very basic things, it's just changed the way I think about my, the way I treat my body. If we spent more time learning about that, we would value our bodies that much more. And I think it would have changed the way I even perceive things growing up with like alcohol or drugs or just even the monthly crazy cycle roller coaster of hormones that is a woman's every monthly cycle. I was not ahead of that until literally years and years later when we started getting smartphones and apps and you could track your cycle. And then I would be like, oh, why is the world falling apart and I wanna jump off of the bridge? Oh, it's. Dude, dude, dude. I look at my phone and it's the week before my period. And I started being like, oh, I don't actually believe all these crazy thoughts in my head. This is just what happens when my hormones are spiking and all that. So really wish I would have been encouraged more to take biology or felt that I was capable because I obviously could have, and I just was really intimidated by it. And I think that it would have really changed a lot of decisions I made about myself and just understanding of basic human biology. I think it would have just, it's important. And I'm learning, I'm taking initiative now as a woman in my thirties, <laughs> late thirties. And it's just so interesting to me. And yeah, I just wish I would have just taken those courses. Who knows, I could have been a doctor, but I, I can't even literally, I can't stand the sight of blood. I can't watch gory movies. I, I am so squeamish. So that's another reason why I didn't take it honestly is because I can't even talk about veins and arteries and stuff, blah, but. <sighs> It is very interesting. And when I did my personal training certification, I had to learn a lot about biology and the respiratory system, like all of it. And I just find it so interesting and so valuable. Biology. Okay, number two, have more fun with fashion. And by this, I mean like I, as a young 15 year old, 
just wanted so badly to fit in and I was and I didn't want to stand out I just wanted to be in the mix and not be picked on have the very basic cool things that were cool at that time it was like white champion tearaway pants and like platform shoes and well <laughs> in my mind and you know the certain way I did my hair and I just cared so much um, about fitting in and I had a lot of fear of not fitting in and that was all through my high school years and it was very boring and I literally just copied what other people were doing and I had no sense of self or fashion or how to express myself and if someone would have explained to me more that clothing can be fun and it can be a way for you to express your interests maybe even I would have tried to seek out more of what my interests were I was a very lost soul in high school and I started getting more into that concept. I traveled abroad for a bit and I'll link that video up here for a year after high school and started to really get to explore myself more and then I went into a whole thrifting thing when I came home in my 20s. I was also super broke which is helpful and I really enjoyed kind of what I the outfits and things I put together in my 20s. But overall, a lot of my life, I've just basically tried to fit in and copy what I think is what I should be wearing for my age and for my job and whatever. And it overall felt pretty boring and it also made me feel like I didn't actually know myself or what I liked and it's taken forever. But I'm finally in a place now where I just wear what I wanna wear. I wear what I think is cool, cool <laughs> and I have a little more fun with expressing myself and giving less fucks about what people think. But man, it took forever to get to this point. And I think it could have been way more fun in school to just, just wear the, like, the funnest outfits and things and like dye my hair and cut my hair how I wanted and just go all out with it. And unfortunately, I was just like trying so hard to just not be not be picked on. I just didn't want to stand out. And then I ended up just being super boring and like forgettable. So more fun with clothes. Okay, number three. This might be controversial. I don't know. I don't obviously, I don't think it is. But just talking about sex more. Now looking back, everyone's like, oh yeah, we had like a sex ed class or something. I can't pinpoint a time, maybe in middle school, we had one brief biology-like session over the body parts of girls and boys, men and women. I honestly don't remember it at all. And I just, at that age especially, it was so, and I know it's different now. I really feel like culturally in, in, in society now, it's very different. But then it was, you just, it was so, it was so taboo to discuss anything related to sex. And it was just like, if you showed any kind of interest or exploration or expression of any way of your sexuality as a girl, you were just blasted as being like a slut and a whore. And then that was like the worst thing that could ever happen. And just being completely slut. I, like I was called a slut and it was written on <laughs> the doors of our high school stall bathrooms. And I hadn't even kissed anybody before. So it happens before you even do anything. And so it just made me absolutely terrified to talk about it, to learn about it, to know anything about it, which was a huge detriment, obviously, in my adult life and in my young adult life, because you're completely unprepared and not confident and don't know what you're doing. And it's awful. So I wish I would have even, I had friends that were more experienced than me at certain ages or that were more comfortable talking about it and I would just clam up. And for years I was like this, for years, just absolutely terrified to discuss it with anybody. And it's really sad because it's an important part of an adult's life and it can be a beautiful part of an adult's life or a young person's life, whatever. And I just was, I had nobody to talk to about it. Nobody in my life did I feel comfortable to talk to about it. And it really ended up making me very powerless in that area of my life for many years. And so looking back at my little 15 year old self, I would have been like, just go to the library. I don't know what you're gonna find at the public library, but like, 
you know, talk to some of your friends that are more experienced, respect them because they have, and just listen to what they have to say about it. Just, you know, t start talking about it more because it really took the power away from me. And it was being, a, being powerless in that area of your life is a horrible thing. So the way to gain power is to be educated, to have people to talk to, to feel supported. And so that's one other thing I would tell my young self. Okay, and kind of related to this, my number four of my five things, we've gone over like, take some biology, <laughs> express yourself with your clothes, get a little crazy, have some fun, talk to your friends about sex, it's okay, it doesn't matter, everyone's already calling you a slut anyway, so just go for it, talk about it, be fearless. And then number four is that I would tell myself that you should go to a nude beach. You should go to Wreck Beach. You should go to the nude beach in Nelson. There's nude beaches all over British Columbia in Canada. And I would have encouraged my young self to go and just sit in a, sit, just go and sit at a nude beach for a day and really see what real people look like, like what real bodies look like. I spent horrible amount of time in my young adult life feeling like what was so what we're supposed to look like is what we're shown in magazines and TV and movies and things like that. Just absolutely unattainable bodies. And at a 15, when you're 15, it's just like, I don't know, you're, you're already comparing yourself to everybody in your high school. And then you're comparing yourself to like these magazines and movie stars and celebrities and you just and I just believed that that's the standard I just believe that was the standard and that was achievable and I remember many days and nights looking in the mirror and like squeezing this and pinching that and looking that way at like 15 16 years old so young and already thinking about food and dieting and exercise and it's super sad to me and I think that if at that age, I'd just been more, more exposed to what real bodies look like. I, it would, you know, that's, that's what I thought was real was not real, was not reality. And if I would have had a little better picture of reality, I think it would have helped me so much more. But again, I know with teenagers, it's hard. But I think that would have been good for me. Just to see more naked bodies and all different shapes and sizes and just really what human beings actually look like. And my last one, number five, which kind of, you know, everything kind of flows. My number five is just to tell my young self that Cosmopolitan magazine is fucked. <laughs> it's fucked. I had the pleasure of my young teenage life of sharing a room with my older sister who's six years older than me. So she had all the Seventeen magazines, all the Cosmo magazines, and I would just eat that shit up every day, looking through those magazines, looking at all the ads, looking at all the celebrities and actors and just the stories and stuff in there, which, you know, absolutely shamed you for anything to do with your period. Like I remember Seventeen magazine, there was a part in the back that was always my favorite and it was like all these stories of people that wrote in, who knows if they were real or not, sharing their most humiliating moments. And it was always like, I got my period in band class and everybody saw, or I thought I was gonna fart and I shat my pants in high school, or I was at the beach and my tampon string was hanging out, or, you know, and it was just like period shaming, period shaming, like, body shaming, just shame, shame, shame. And I ate it up. I, my little 15 year old brain just ate all that up. And so I was always so terrified of going to high school and eventually even university and humiliating myself and doing something like to embarrass myself. And I was so afraid of being embarrassed. And I hate those magazines now when I look at them. And like, I even later in my twenties would be reading them and it was just like, how, to fit into a cookie cutter version of yourself that is perfect for, you know, that's perfect for your job, perfect for your partner, perfect for <laughs> society, but nothing to do with like, just be yourself. You know, obviously they're selling makeup and clothes and all these other things and trying to sell those things to you. So they want you to believe that you're a piece of shit now, but with some polish you could become like a better beautiful more happy successful person so those magazines were the absolute effing worst and i wish they would be banned 
completely from even being published and I don't know how to save all the young girls from ever seeing them but they're truly awful. They're the absolute worst. I wish I'd never had my little hands on them as a very impressionable young woman because it was absolute total trash garbage and really fucked up my brain for a long time in terms of my self image and what I was thought was the expectations of myself and it's just absolutely horrible. And who ever bought an outfit or, or like, <laughs> styled themselves so they could go from day to night from day to night i always thought this was a thing at that age and then i got into an office and worked i've been working since i was 19 years old and there was never a day in my life where i had to transition from a day outfit look and makeup to night i would just go home and change or just go out the way i was dressed i don't know it was just like the, the reality that those magazines created was just so ridiculous and I just hate it so much and I do lie awake at night thinking what would I have been like if I had never had my hands on those horrible stupid magazines they were just the absolute worst so those are just five I could like literally come up with many many more but I do think those ones would have really helped me as a young 15 year old I'm really curious to hear what your thoughts are and what yours would be down below. I think this would be a really fun conversation to have. So please share below if there's any ideas you have of things you would have warned yourself about or suggested or encouraged yourself to do at 15. And if that would have maybe changed things for you or just made things easier because we don't want to change things too much. But everybody probably could have had a bit easier time in high school. So. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> it was really fun to just kind of think of those things and, and yeah, maybe change a little bit of my high school experience. Cause let me tell you, not my fondest years. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for watching this week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.